Two years since the beginning. Two years since the first recorded outbreak. At the time, no one knew the truth. No one knew the deathly horrors of this virus. You should have acted, but it's already here. Their development was inevitable. The spilled blood of our society would be the price to pay. But no one wanted to believe, believe it could happen, believe it was possible. And when the truth finally dawned, so fell the civilizations of humanity. But we, we have thrived in our strongholds. We have thrived with our immunities. Day 752 since first reported outbreak. Blood samples 119, 123, 124, and 128 infected. Samples 125, 126 look unstable, 129 still unchanged. Samples 127. Goddamn door won't open. Come on, anybody in there? Come on! Help! Who the hell are you? Are you with anyone? Yeah, I'm infected. No, of course not. Seriously though, you gotta let me in. Look, you need to shut up and listen to me right now. I don't care who you are or how you're still alive, you cannot stay here. Whoa, whoa. Back off. There's a play outside. I need somewhere safe to get. In case you notice, you hear it. What? What is this place? It's a lab. What are you trying to make a cure or something? Isn't that like impossible? It, it, it's not. It, it can't be impossible. I, I won't accept that. Well, if it was possible, wouldn't it have been done already? Look, I, I don't know. Stop asking questions. I, I have to finish this report. You, you wouldn't understand. Yeah, well, I've seen a lot of living out there. I'm not exactly turning into a zombie myself. So maybe you should get off on your butt and stop working on this stupid cure. At least I'm trying. What are you doing? Banging on garage doors? I'm seeing something right. I'm staying alive, aren't I? Look, I know we didn't get off to the best start, but do you want to work together? At the very least, one of us can go on while the other's can me. Look, I have a PhD from John Hopkins University in organic chemistry. If anyone's going to be eaten, it's you. Look, degrees don't matter in our world right now, alright? There's little pocket survivors everywhere, there's a billion infected running around. This isn't just some high school boys movie idea. Look, unless you have supplies I need, like food and clothing and chemicals, get out and shut up. Might not have everything I need in this little backpack of mine, but I've gotten real good at reading drug stores. I'll be back. Thank you for uh, doing the supply run earlier. You're more than welcome to stay. They gotta evolve more legs than that so they can keep up with me. Say, so, what's your name anyway? I'm Dr. Damien L. Homer. You? I'm just Glenn. Glenn Sanchez. What are you working on anyway, Homer? Just the cure. You know how the virus works, correct? I'll start at the beginning for you. Two years ago, specifically 752 days ago, this outbreak was first recorded. Somewhere on the East Coast, little town in New Jersey, it started with an unknown casualty in the woods. The first infected individual, a rabid being, well, it attacked the two officers that night, woke up from the dead, infected, and it attacked. From there, it snowballed. First it went for the cops, then it attacked the civilians. I know it's because one of my colleagues sent me this, Dr. Lyser. His last transmission before he, was, he too was gone. I didn't tell you all of it. There was one part I left out, but now I understand. The murderer, he... He's one who looks like you guys. He hides among you and uses you as breeding grounds for uh, more of him. He's a mutated viral parasite, and it ends right there. But I understand. What you've got to understand is that this plague is a mutated virus. The virus particle is essentially a nucleic acid, DNA, or RNA, enclosed in a protein shell or coat. Viruses are extremely small, approximately 15 to 25 nanometers in diameter. The virus that has plagued the world is known as the IR15 virus. Viruses may have double-stranded DNA, double-stranded RNA, single-stranded DNA, or single-stranded RNA. The genetic material is not typically exposed, but covered by a protein coat. 
The genome is typically organized as a long molecule that is usually straight or circular. The IR15 virus is composed of up to 169 genes and is a straight virus. The protein coat that envelops viral genetic material is known as a capsid. A capsid is composed of protein subunits called capsomeres. Capsids can have several shapes, polyhedral, rod, or complex. Capsids function to protect the viral gen genetic material from damage. In addition to the protein coat, some viruses have specialized structures. The envelope has both host cell and viral components and assists the virus in infecting its host. Capsid additions are also found in bacteriophages. Viruses possess both living and non-living characteristics. They also require other organisms to host themselves in order to survive. They are thusly named obligate parasites. Viruses can be spread in the following exemplar ways. Airborne, bloodborne, contamination. The IR15 virus inhibits all these qualities. Only those with immunities can defend against the infection. When a virus is situated in a host, it requires the means to reproduce before it dies out without producing more viruses. This is done by altering the genetic makeup of a cell to start coding the materials required to make more viruses. By altering the cell instructions, more viruses can be produced. To reproduce, the virus approaches the bacteria and attaches itself to the cell membrane. Detail gives the virus the means to thrust its genetic information into the bacteria. Nucleotides from the host are stolen in order for the virus to create copies of itself. The viral DNA alters the genetic coding of the host cell to create protein coats for the newly uh, cr created viral DNA strands. The viral DNA enters its DNA coat. And the cell is swollen with many copies of the original virus and bursts allowing the virus to attach itself to the other nearby cells. The process begins all over again with many more viruses attacking the host cells. With the IR15, once the mammal is dead, the virus stimulates the brain's nervous system and revitalizes the motor functions of the mammal. However, all memory is lost. And that's why we're in this mess today. It's a screwed up world, but I'm trying my best. I mean, I have the immunity to the virus, and seeing as you're here, you also have the immunity. And I'm trying to use my immunity, my blood, to try to cure this virus. That is one hell of a story. Doesn't stop us from becoming zombie dinner, though, does it? No, it doesn't. Come on, let's go get some sleep. Day 7.53 since first recorded outbreak. Samples number 125 and number 126 are lost, contaminated. Sample 127 is unstable. Sample 129 still unchanged. Infection appears to have no visible effects. Up already, Doc? Tell me again, how, how did you survive the zombie apocalypse being as lazy as you are? Cut the crap, what's the plan for today? Well, I must say, I have a blood sample here that hasn't changed in a few days. The cells seem to be thriving. The infection can't seem to get a hold of it, actually. Really? That's interesting. Do you realize what this could mean? Frankly, like, I don't give a damn. Just tell me what it means. It means we could have a possible cure. The technology of repairing recombinant DNA in vitro by cutting up DNA molecules and splicing together fragments from more than one organism is DNA splicing. Chemicals called restriction enzymes act as the scissors to cut the DNA. Thousands of varieties of restriction enzymes exist, each recognizing only a single nucleotide sequence. Once it finds that sequence in a strand of DNA, it attacks it and splits the base pairs apart, leaving single helix strands at the end of two double helixes. Scientists are then free to add any genetic sequences they wish into the broken chain, and afterwards the chain is repaired as a longer chain with the added DNA with another enzyme called ligase. Hence, any form of genetic material can be spliced together. Bacteria and human DNA can be combined. You see, this could cure the infected and vaccinate the other survivors. Yep, do you want cereal or something? No, just, just go away. No eating in the lab. Oh, why do we have to do this now? Can't we just do this tomorrow? What the hell is that?
fine. I, I was talking about something. It's like, that's not the, that's not important. There's some guy out there. He's running around. Wait, Glenn, there was a live person? Yeah, it was just some guy out there. He wasn't infected. But that's impossible. <laughs> what the hell is going on? What's that out of there? Holy crap! Who the hell are you? What do you want? It doesn't matter. Let's we'll grab the nose and get out of here. Glenn, where are we going? Alright, I know somewhere we can go. We're definitely going to play. Alright. You can run, but you can never escape evolution. Alright, where are we going? Alright, I guess pleasure with us. Alright, let's go. Crap, the end the trail ends. Enough, you fools. You cannot attempt to change the course of evolution. Look, I don't care who you are, but leave us alone. Yeah, just just back off. We are the Darwinists. The Brotherhood formed from the ideals of Darwin himself. We seek to allow evolution to take its natural course. Salvos aptissimum, survival of the fittest. You will not play God. You will not allow it. Natural selection is Darwin's most famous theory. It states that evolutionary change comes through the production of variation in each generation and differential survival of individuals with different combinations of these variable characters. Individuals with characteristics which increase their probability of survival will have more opportunities to reproduce, and their offspring will also benefit from the heritable, advantageous character. So over time, these variants will spread throughout the population. We follow Darwin's five theories. Evolution. Species come and go through time. While they exist, they change. Common descent. Organisms are descended from one or several common ancestors and have diversified from this original stock. Species multiply. The diversification of life involves populations of one species diverging until they become two separate species. This has probably occurred billions of times. Gradualism. Evolutionary change occurs through incremental small changes within populations. New species are not created suddenly. And natural selection. Evolutionary change occurs through variation between individuals. Some variants give the individual an extra survival probability. Don't you understand? You're nothing meaningless in the grander scheme. A scheme where the weak die and the strong survive. We have no pity for the weak. Now prepare to die. Yeah, I'm back. Yeah. On my signal, kill them. <laughs> kill them! Kill them all! <laughs> Yeah, the one that didn't change. Well, if, if you can use for the cure, use your own blood, use the formula. I have it in here, right now. But, but, but what about you? I, I'm gonna go buy you some time, alright? Here you go. Good luck. So I guess it's up to me now to save the world. Your disease and I'm the cure. Me and the other survivors. One step at a time. But I promise you, Damien, I'll get this cure to the people. But that, that is still a very long way away.